this video we're going to be looking at Production Possibility Frontiers, or PPFs. So, the first question is to say, what is a production possibility frontier? And a production possibility frontier shows the total possible number of goods that an economy can produce. And the way that it looks is it's on two axes. The, each axis just has the number of goods you can produce. Uh, this number of good A on the y-axis, as I've drawn it this way, and this number of good B. And the way that you put the production possibility frontier together is you just say, if we maximized all of our output and we were producing a combination of good A or good B, what would be that maximum output that we could achieve? The, that maximum output that we could achieve in, in our economy is this line here, which we call the production possibility frontier. And so the maximum that an economy can produce as a combination of two goods. And another way you can look at this is you can say that if we didn't produce any of good B, then it would be possible to produce 10 of good A, whereas if we didn't produce any of good A, then it would be possible to produce 10 of good B. And somewhere in between, say on this point here, it's possible to produce, say, seven units of good A and seven units of good B. And it, it just goes in like this. So that, you know, that's, that's labeled seven and seven. All right, uh, production possibility frontiers show scarcity and opportunity cost. The way that they show scarcity is to say that you cannot, um, you cannot produce more than the production possibility frontier. So it shows scarcity because it shows the maximum that we can produce given our scarce resources. We cannot produce outside of the curve. Given the resources that we have in our economy, this is our maximum line, and A is outside of that line. We cannot produce A because it is beyond the resources which we have in our economy. Um, we can also show, yeah, so, so we cannot produce it, we cannot produce a point A, but we can produce a point B. Um, it also shows opportunity cost because it shows us what we have to give up if we want to produce more of another good. So if we want to produce more of good, um, of, of this good here, cotton, so this is cotton compared to wheat, then if we want to produce, say, two more units of cotton, what do we have to give up in order to produce those two units? So in order to increase our cotton pr production by two, we have to give up these two units of wheat. If we're here at B, we're, so we're producing seven units of wheat and five units of cotton, if we want to increase the production of cotton, we have to then say, well, we've given up these two units of wheat. And so therefore, you could say that the opportunity cost of the two more un units of cotton is those two units of wheat. And moving between the two points on the PPF shows us this opportunity cost. So, so, so moving from point B to point C along the, the production possibility frontier shows that opportunity cost. Now, you will get questions about why might your PPF shift. The PPF will shift if you have an event which increases the factors of production or increases the efficiency of the factors of production, that will shift your PPF out. So as an example, if you had an influx of immigrants who are willing to work on both wheat farms or on cotton farms, it pushes, it pushes the maximum amount that you can produce out because you've got more of that factor of production known as labor. So therefore, you can produce more of either of those goods. Or a new type of tractor that, that increases the efficiency of both wheat and cotton farms. That type of capital resource would, would make you more efficient in producing either one of those goods. So at any given point in time, you can produce more of those goods and, and, and it, it will shift your PPF out. Um, it can also shift in if you have an, an event which decreases the factors of production or their efficiency. And so this, I would think of as an example, this is like a destructive event. I would say, for example, a hurricane, or a war, or a restricted immigration policy can all shift your PPF inwards and leads you to be able to produce less of those two goods um, if, you, if you're maximizing your output. Now, why might a PPF pivot 
A PPF will pivot if you have an event which increases the ability of the economy to produce one good but not the other. So if we had, so here we go, any event is changing the factor of production for one good but not the other. If we had, for example, a new invention that increases cotton production but does not affect wheat production, that will mean you've got this pivot, which means you have the same y-intercept here for wheat, but because you can produce more cotton because of this new machine, the whole thing kind of like pivots backwards like this, and so you, you, you get a higher x-intercept because, because any amount of cotton that you're producing, you can now produce it more because you're more efficient in producing it after this, this, this new machine. Um, this is an article, well, this is an image actually, of, of Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria, Maria, which I think is a really interesting way of conceptualizing PPFs shifting. What it shows here, and I can get like a little bit of a close up here, is it shows the, um, the, the way that San Juan, Puerto Rico looked before the hurricane, immediately after the hurricane, and then even, I believe, something like eight months after the hurricane, that was the night landscape of San Juan, Puerto Rico, compared to the night landscape before. So you can see, actually, that there's much less, there's much less light in San Juan, Puerto Rico as a result of this, because the hurricane basically wiped out a lot of the infrastructure. So the hurricane pretty much shifted that PPF for, for Puerto Rico in because of the fact that that they, it destroyed a lot of the, the infrastructure, a lot of the, the equipment. And I think that's a really good image to, to know that by. Um, the, the PPF can show as well actual versus potential economic growth. The way that you show um, actual economic growth occurs when there are more goods produced in the economy, and you can show actual, actual economic growth by moving from inside your PPF towards the outside of it. That shows you're producing more, and so therefore you have what you call actual economic growth. You show potential economic growth by having a shift in the PPF. So this occurs when the productive capacity of the economy expands, and it's represented by showing a PPF curve shifting outwards. That will be very important when we start to talk about things like long-run aggregate supply versus aggregate demand. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice little thing to think about at this stage. Uh, another way you can use a PPF is to show unemployment. The way that you show unemployment on a PPF, unemployment, first of all, is the, it, it's workers who want to work, it's workers who are able and willing to work and are looking for a job, but who are not working. What that shows is that labor is underutilized, and so therefore there are workers out there who could be doing something, but are not. And so the way that you can show this is you can say, at point A, we are experiencing unemployment, because we could be producing out here, but we're actually only producing there, so our economy has, is not fully utilized. That, again, is going to be very useful when you think about long-run aggregate supply and aggregate demand later on in the course. And how do we show a decrease in unemployment? A decrease in unemployment means that there are people who used to be looking for jobs who couldn't find them, who are now finding them and working, and so therefore we are moving to this point which is not very efficient, because all these people want to work, but, but they can't. But to decrease unemployment means that we're moving to a place which is more efficient, which means that these people working are now producing, and so therefore it pushes, it, it moves out towards the PPF boundary, which is a way of showing a decrease in unemployment. The only other thing that I want to mention right now, and we will come back to this again and again, is that what is productive efficiency? All of these points have in common the fact that they are on the PPF boundary. What that means is, is that, that the economy is making full use of its scarce resources if it's operating at the PPF boundary. This is a type, so it implies that firms are not make, wasting their resources. It implies that firms are minimizing their costs. We call any point on the PPF boundary productively efficient. And it's a metric that we will look back again and again in the course, but one way of thinking about productive efficiency is to say that we're operating at the boundary of our PPF. And we'll, we'll leave the rest for another short period.